Each year, tens of thousands of songbirds pass through Toronto and spend time at a wetland that juts out into Lake Ontario. While at the Tommy Thompson Park, the birds feast on a buffet of insects and seeds, which gives them the boost of energy they need for the final leg of their migration. But why do migrating songbirds travel straight through Canada's largest city instead of skirting around it? One theory, says York University's Scott Teroff, is that birds use magnetic fields to plan their migration routes. Some organisms, including birds, have been found to have magnetite um, com compounds in their, in their some of their brain cells. And uh, we don't know how, but somehow they can use the information from the Earth's magnetic field um, and translate that information using the magnetite in their brain cells to help them orient during migration. While Teroff says more research is needed, he believes it may be possible that the songbirds are honing in on a giant magnetic formation beneath Toronto, as if following a compass to their favorite dining spot. And as the birds arrive in Toronto, the first land they see is Tommy Thompson Park. This makes the park an ideal place to stop for a snack, says bird research coordinator Brett Tryon. Birds have already traveled hundreds or thousands of miles before they get here, so often their fat supplies are depleted and they need to stop and, uh, and refuel. So basically we call Tommy Thompson Park their gas station. While in the park, the songbirds are captured and tagged as part of a nationwide migration network. The birds are carefully measured, so 56, weighed, um, 9 .2. and fitted with an aluminum band. So I'm just gently close it around the leg. This year alone, researchers have recorded 155 unique bird species in the park. But there are dangers for the songbirds, both here in the park and out in the city. While passing through Toronto's busy streets, songbirds are lured by tall glass buildings and bright lights. And in the park, their feeding ground is under threat from an abundance of cormorants, whose nests and guano are destroying the trees in the wetland at a rapid rate. In 1990, 22 cormorants were introduced to the park. There are now 30,000. With three of the four peninsulas already destroyed or under threat from cormorant populations, some are calling for a bird call. Julie Gordon, Reuters.